So now that we know how to make a user frame, let's create a job because we should always create our tool frame and user frame first. So now let's create a job. So here's what we got. We got our pointer from last time. We got our little box fixture from last time. And, and there's three. And what we do first is let's we go into select and now bring up our job menu. Um, these are the various different job types. I'm going to narrow it in by hitting type and TP. That's our teach pendant program. And you can see we don't have any teach pendant programs in this uh, robot already. So what we first do is hit create. And then if you want, you cursor down to options keyboard and then hit keyboard and you can actually type in a name. Don't have it start with a number and I would recommend no spaces. So this is, um, let's just do joint. I'm going to show you because it'll make sense in a second. Hit enter. And before you go, I want you, before you hit edit, hit detail. And this is important because in detail is where we get our detail screen. And the, you can leave a comment on what it is. So if you want, you can double click on it, go to options keyboard and type in this is to show joint motion. All right. Now, the other thing is a group mask. If there's a one there, that is saying, hey, I can control this robot. If I'm doing any type of motion, uh, any type of robot with a motion control, then I need to uh, make sure there's a one there. If I'm just doing non-motion commands, I can put a star there. Um, and that's great because any job with non-motion commands, you can put a star in there and it'll work out good. And the benefit of that is you can run it, um, you can run it a little bit different, like as a macro or other things. Uh, sorry, I'm fixing my camera because it's cutting off the, my bald, balding head. Um, but keep that in mind. Um, I can scroll down some more. I could turn on and off right protection and, and ignore any pauses um, through here. So uh, those are the big things under detail. If I hit, then if I hit um, previous out, you know, then my job is there. If I hit enter, it'll show up. And at any point, if I want to see the current job, all I got to do is hit edit. Okay. So here's my job. The first thing you should do is is the very first thing I would go into. See this little arrow way off to the side here? See this little arrow way off to the side? First thing you should do, move that arrow around and make sure instruction shows up under F1. Hit next page and go into offsets and frames. And then I would put in F, uh, F frame number as a constant and whatever your current U frame number is. I know it's two. If you don't know, hit shift and cord. And this will tell you your current tool and user frame that you're dealing with. The important that this will save you a lot of headaches because how you record your job is going to be based upon what your user frame and your tool frame is. If it's in world, it's going to be that your user frame is zero. But if you're going between jobs, um, make sure that you're going to match whatever your current user frame and current U tool frame is. So instruction, next, offsets and frames, U tool number, constant of two. Okay. And if you want to make sure, so say you want to make sure those are your active frames, if you hold down shift and forward while enabling the dead man, um, it will make sure that those are your current shift and your, if you, those are your current tool and user frame by hitting, and then shift cord will bring up your, um, your menu. Okay. So now those are set. Now I can record my job. Um, joint motion is let's move the robot as fast as possible in any way possible to get to that position. So joint motion is really good if you're, you're going back to a home position or you're, you want if speed is at an essence to get something somewhere. Um, but you'll notice if you're doing joint, it may not go in a straight line, even if I do a straight line. So if I want to record a point, what I need to do is first hit point and make sure what's my active uh, motion type. I'm going to do this first one here. And once I click on it, it records a joint and P1. This is percentage of over the percentage of the override or the max speed. So it'd be 100% or 40%. And then fine is a termination type. Um, if it's fine, then it's going to stop at that position. If it's continuous, it's going to kind of roll through that position. So think of this as a stop sign. Think of the continuous as a yield sign. Um, and so now, and anytime you see the at sign, it means I'm at that position. So if I hit shift and I notice I'm in the jogging user, I'm just going to hit... Um, uh, Z, Z minus, and notice I moved away from that and I'm no longer there. 
this is showing everything up in um, in here. You can um, hide that if you want. Um, uh, where is it? Um, you can hide those point types um, if you wanted to, but I kind of forget how to do it right now. So um, I think it's which one of these is it? So I'll find I'll, I'll remember it in a bit. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Show in high position, I think that. Oh. So I thought that was it. But anyway, let's just keep going. So this is my first position. So what you do with any job, you jog the robot or move the robot to the position you want. Then you hit shift point to record that position. So if I wanted to just say, I want to trace that box. And I'm going to do it all in joint just to show you. Um, in this case, I can move everything straight down. With, I don't need to jog the robot. I can move it in line. So now I'm in that position. I'm going to hit shift and point, and it's going to record the next point. And I can just X plus it up, shift point. I can Y plus it up, shift point, Z, uh, X minus down. Say I'm right there, shift point. And, I, and if I, since I know I'm going back to position two, I can just hit shift point and just change this number to two. And that saves me a little bit of time. And then when I'm done, I can go back to home position. I get shift point again and just hit one because I know that's my first position. And now I've just recorded my first job. If I zoom in and I'm going to, oh, I kind of, oh, I didn't trace the position very well, but you get the sense. Whoopsie. Um, I should have went in three-dimensional space, but you get a basic box set up um, in this way. Okay, so now if I want to run this job, I cursor to the top, hit shift and forward, and it'll go through that position. Now that went through it really fast. I'm going to slow that down a little bit and shift forward. And if you notice, let's see if we can get this to notice. It looks like it's going in the straight line, but it really isn't. And because if I'm doing a joint motion, sometimes the fastest way to go from here to here is to just to move the robot through. So while it looks like it's going in high speed, let me speed it up a little bit and see. And this is fine. I'm going to change some of these. To, and if I want to edit, I all I got to do is from the number side, go in here and I can change. I can go to choice and I can change that to continuous. And let's see. Change a couple of those. And now let me for, shift forward. And look how fast that went. It didn't even hit some of those point positions. Let me do that again. See, it didn't even hit those positions because it went there because it went so fast. So be careful with joint and be too careful with continuous. Um, change those back to fine. So that is my joint. That is all my joints, you know, my joint job, okay? Let's create another job, and I'm going to just call it, you know, linear. Because sometimes we actually want to go through a straight line. And this time we do a better job of following the box. But joint is fast as possible do something, okay? So let me go into select, create, and I'm going to options keyboard, and I'm going to just call this linear, okay? Hit edit. And now I'm here. Once again, make sure you do your instructions. Get, that's a good habit to get into of your frames. Constant of two. Instruction. Frames. U-tool. Constant of two. Whoops. Okay. So now I'm just going to re-record this position as a home position. So, you know, shift point. Now if I want to run, I'm going to kind of move this now. to the point. I want to actually trace the box. Let's pretend we're welding something. That looks better. So if I want to, if, if I'm going in, I may not want to do a joint motion because that will be, you know, so if I'm doing a proper protocol, let me go out here. If I'm going to do a, a, I may want to move it to a, an approach position as fast as possible, and that could be a joint motion. But once I get to that point, I may want to subtly lower myself in with a, maybe straight down on a point if I want to make contact. 
So I may want to do this as another joint position. But then if I approach the corner, Z in, if I hit a point and linear, see now that that is a, 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 an L. Okay? Linear is just going to be a straight line. And this one requires math. So sometimes you may get in singularity because you, you know, because of the way the orientation of the robot. Okay, so now I'm just going to move that up here to this position here. I'm still am I, I'm kind of touching. I'm going to move it over the Y a little bit so it feels like I'm actually, yeah, maybe off a little bit. Let's just, but you'll get the idea. And now I just hit uh, shift point, and the last position that I pick is going to show up. And now it's just linear. And let me move it over to the top. Again, you know, there's that position. If I'm actually in the real world, I would be a lot more careful, but this is for demonstration purposes. Shift point. And now I'm going to go down the box to the other corner. Make sure I'm hitting it. Let me Z in a little bit. Let me Z out. And make sure I hit that corner. There I go. Point. And now again, if I want to complete the circle, I don't have to go all the way back. I can just hit shift point again and then change that to two. And then when I, if I want to pull away, I can hit shift point again and change. And if I want to change the motion type, I can make that because remember, um, oh wait, I need to make this three and make this two because remember I had that, um, that approach point and I can linear out. And then lastly, if I, I can hit point, here and then make this go back to home. Okay, so let's run through this job. And what you'll notice is is with linear, instead of having a percentage, it's going to be off, off millimeters uh, per second. If you go into variables, you can change that to something else. But millimeters per second is the main um, speed because if you're doing something linear, you may want to control something like a, a welding a, a, a welding bead or a a paint spray or even a pick in place because you may want to if you pick up something you don't want to, you know or jerk it out and throw it. So, so I'm going to try to run this job, but you're, you'll notice I'm going to get an error. Oh, maybe I didn't. Sorry, I thought I may have did this on accident. Um, I thought it was going to give me another job and function, but you can see it's running much slower. Up, oh, singularity detected because it's too straight. What, and if that's the case, then sometimes you have to kind of uh, put in an intermediate point so that it doesn't, you know, so we'll kind of go through that a little bit or reposition your job. So let me go back to this position. And anytime you want to go to a point, highlight it and you get forward and it'll, it'll take you that position. Okay. But since... But since that's there, let's see if we can't just give it a little bit more of an angle because it's too straight on. Oh, let's shift roll. Let's do it like that. And then even if because I just changed the angle of descent, I still need, I would, if I want to touch up this point here, I need to hit shift and touch up even to correct that point. And then let's run it. There, it got there. So sometimes you got to readjust your orientation. So let me go through this whole thing again. And you can see it's running slower, but you can see it's the tool center point is staying and the robot is moving. It's just going around that box. And that is how, that's a linear box setup. Now, if I want to go back to my other job, so if I hit select and joint and hit edit, and then hit shift forward and try to run it. Oh, so no, select, joint, enter. Now I'm in the joint job. But notice um, linear should still be active, and look what it set, told me. Run request fail. That's because once you're in a job, you have to abort out of that job before it can go on. 
So if you hit function, abort all, and then shift reset, you should be able to run that job. And you can see I and it went through it much faster. So there's that, you know, there's the difference between joint and linear job motions. In another video, I'm gonna, I'll talk about circles because that's a little bit more complex, but at least you now know, and then I'll talk about job editing and that as well. So circle and job editing, but we, but we've learned how to create jobs. Um, we've done some very basic editing, um, how, how we um, record jobs and the like.